Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to today's video, which is gonna be all about this guy, my Libra. So I do get a lot of questions about how it works and how you use it and that kind of thing. So I will be answering all of them in this video here. Now at the end of the video, I will be showing exactly how you put it on and doing a tutorial of how you attach a sensor. But today is Monday and my sensor change day isn't until Thursday. So I will be filming that for you and popping it at the end. But I'm going to start the video with how this works. So this sensor is continuously monitoring my glucose concentration in your interstitial, I can't even say it, interstitial fluid i think that's how you say it and that is basically the fluid around your cells and it is essentially the same as your blood glucose but there is just a slight delay from the glucose getting from your blood into this fluid so that's why sometimes you may see a reading on a sensor be slightly different to a blood sugar reading because there is a slight delay of around seven minutes so it's basically the number that you see when you are checking your um, glucose readings on a Libra sensor is your blood glucose seven minutes ago, if that makes sense. Now each sensor lasts for 14 days and then once the 14 days are up, you just apply a new one yourself at home. You don't need to go to the doctors or have any procedures or anything done. They're really easy to use. Like I said, I'm gonna explain that at the end of the video, but you just pop it on yourself once every two weeks and it should last the full two weeks. Now, a lot of people do find that they can fall off. Mine hasn't fallen off in a while though. And there are lots of things you can do to help it stay on for the full amount of time. So if that is something that you are interested in and you're wanting to know how to get your Libra to stay on for longer, let me know in the comments below and I will definitely make that video. I already think this one's gonna be quite long, so we will not go to that check right your glucose levels you use either the reader that they give you or your phone if you have an iphone 8 or above and you simply swipe it over the sensor and then all the data from the sensor is transferred to your phone or the reader and is displayed on the screen now unlike a dexcom which is a cgm or any other kind of cgm so constant glucose monitoring system the libra is a flash glucose monitor so like i just said you have to scan it in order to see the data whereas with a cgm your data is constantly being sent from the sensor to the cloud and then to your phone or your apple watch or whatever it may be which is why on those devices you can have things like alarms to go off when your blood sugar is going up or down because the, the data is constantly being analyzed and transported to you whereas that's not possible with the libra because all of the data is stored on the sensor until you physically scan it and the sensor holds eight hours of data so for example if you go to bed and you sleep longer than eight hours without scanning it you will lose the last hours of data up to eight hours so for example if you go to bed at 10 and you wake up at eight when you scan your libra you will have data from midnight until eight and the data from 10 p.m to midnight will be lost because there's only storage capacity for eight hours on this thing but that doesn't matter at all. You don't need to like wake up in the night or to make sure that you are scanning every eight hours. It will just catch up from where it left off. And you can see from the graph that it provides you what data you're missing and make, and you will just understand what's happened to your blood sugar in those hours. Like if you went to bed at 12 and you've woken up at four and you've got a bit of a gap missing, obviously you know that it's gone down, you know? Like it's, it's very there intuitive. There are lots of advantages of a Libra uh, or a CGM. The main thing is that you don't have to finger prick anymore. So you don't you you don't have to calibrate it in any way. I know a lot of older systems you would have to calibrate with a finger prick, but you don't have to do that anymore. You do not have to check your blood sugars unless your Libra has become inaccurate. This means that it is super easy to check your glucose levels on the go. For example, if you are running and you think you might be hypo, you no longer have to stop to do a blood test. You can just swipe your phone over, have a quick look at the screen. And if you're fine, you just carry on. And if you're not fine, then you stop. And for example, if you are a parent with a young child, it just makes it so much easier to check their blood glucose. If they're running around, you just literally have to get close enough to like swipe the arm and you're fine and you can check their blood sugars. And equally, for example, sometimes if I'm having a really rough day and I really need my sleep, but my blood sugars aren't very good before I go to bed, I will ask James to just 
scan my Libra an hour or so after I've gone to bed because he normally goes to bed later than me and then that means I don't have to wake up and it's just super easy for him to do it without disturbing me and I get my sleep and my diabetes is all managed at the same time. One of the main things that I love about the Libra and one of the main reasons why I started to even look into it in the first place is it's the arrows that it shows you. So because it is constantly monitoring your glucose levels, it can see whether you are rising or dropping. So when you scan, it will tell you not only your glucose levels, but it will give you an arrow either straight if your blood sugar is completely stable or diagonally down, straight down, diagonally up or directly up, depending on whether you are dropping or rising quickly or slowly. So for example, I found this really helpful because a lot of the time before I had the Libra overnight, I would do a blood test and it would say six. And then I'd wake up in the morning and it would say 16. And I had no idea that when I was six, I was actually six, but going up. Whereas now before I go to bed, I can scan. And if I'm six and it's got an hour going up, I'll just wait a little bit and see if it flattens out. Or like I said, ask someone else <laughs> to scan me, scan my Libra after I've gone to sleep. And you can know that you're gonna be able to act and react to where you're going rather than where you are at now. So you can be kind of proactive rather than reactive. It means that basically you can better plan your insulin to avoid hypos. So like on the other end of the spectrum, if you are five, but you're dropping, you don't wanna then go and give yourself the same amount of insulin before a meal as if you weren't dropping, if that makes sense. You, you're already on the way to being low, but if you do a blood test, you're not gonna see that. Whereas with this, you can be like, oh, okay, I'm quite close to being low and I'm on my way to being low, so I'm gonna sort that out right now. That is probably one of the functions that I appreciate most about my Libra. And if you watch any of my day in the life of a type one diabetic vlogs, you'll see how I use these arrows a lot to plan my insulin and my activity and know where my blood sugar is, where my blood sugar is heading, and so I can avoid highs and hypos, basically. But yeah, like I said, because it is constantly monitoring your blood sugar, it gives you so much data as well, which can be really helpful for analysing things. So it will tell you your average um, blood sugar level per by time of day, and so you can see what times of day you need to work on if you're high all the time at like before dinner or if you're going low all the time overnight you can see those areas and we'll also show you a graph of your average day so you can see exactly where you're rising and falling and it gives you averages throughout the day so it's super helpful in terms of having data to analyze it also tells you your average number of no your total number of hypos at a given period of time each week each fortnight and each month so for example you if you say I know you're having three hypos every week at 3 p.m. You know that that's a difficult period for you and you need to adjust things. So it's really helpful for knowing, yeah, your day to day patterns and quickly spotting those changes that need to be taken care of. And the last two pieces of data that it gives you are an estimated HbA1c and your percent of time spent within your target range. So when you get your Libra, you can decide what you want your target blood sugar range to be whether that's four to eight, four to nine, four to 10, whatever your target blood sugar is. And then it will tell you the percent of time that you are spending within that target range. So that includes overnight, between meals, anytime when you're not scanning, because it is constantly measuring these things, you can have not just the number of blood sugar readings in that range, but the actual amount of time in range. And that figure is, more important than your HbA1c because it's actually quite easy to have a fairly good HbA1c if you're having a lot of high blood sugars if you're then also having a lot of low blood sugars and you're actually just swinging from up and down and up and down and up and down it will average out to probably quite a good number but in reality your body is suffering and you could be causing yourself some long-term damage if you're having swinging blood sugars like drastically swinging blood sugars for a long period of time Whereas if you have the Libra, it would actually tell you that yes, your average is fine, but in reality, you're only spending 30 or 50% of time in your target range and the rest of the time you're above or below target, you'll know that you really need to work on those blood sugar swings. Whereas if you've got a good percent of time in range, you know that you are fairly steady, even if your HbA1c is slightly higher, but you're steady, but just above where you want to be, it's better than having a slightly lower HbA1c, but going up and down and up and down, because that's 
really putting a lot of stress on your so body. So like I said, there are still though occasional times where you will need to do a finger prick, like if your Libra becomes inaccurate, and that is very rare. But again, if you want a video all about the different times when your Libra could be inaccurate, let me know in the comments below and I will make that one for you. But yeah, I don't want to stuff this video with too much information. But one of the main times when you have to do a finger prick test is if your blood sugar is changing rapidly. Because, like I said, there is a seven minute delay between your blood glucose and the reading that your Libra is sensing. So, for example, if you've gone low and you've treated your low and then 10 minutes later you you check your Libra to see where you're at. It's a seven minute delay, so you're only actually going to be seeing your glucose, your blood glucose for three minutes after you've treated and obviously that's not enough time for the carbohydrates to start working and so you're gonna maybe eat more because you're it's still gonna say that you're low whereas if you do a blood test it will be slightly ahead of the Libra and you'll know that your treatment is actually working or it might not be working and you do actually need to eat more but you don't want to start over correcting things just because you've got the slight delay of a Libra equally on the other side if you are high and you've corrected and then you scan your Libra a bit later and it says you haven't come down yet well maybe you actually have but you've got the seven minute delay and so if you then inject it again you'll end up making yourself low because you've overcorrected and given yourself too much insulin for the high just because the the Libra needs a little bit of time more time to show the accurate data so you will need to do a finger prick if you are correcting a blood sugar and you're thinking about correcting again because like I said, there may just be the delay on the Libra. So that is everything I wanted to explain about how it works and how you use it and the information that you get. So let's get into how you put it on. So it is now Thursday, which means Libra change day. And this is the little box that it comes in. And yeah, I'm just gonna apply it and take you through how you apply it and anything that you need to know for like getting the best results from your sensor. The very first thing that I want to say is that when you first apply a new sensor, it physically will not work for the first hour once you scan it. So as soon as you pass your phone, like scan it with your phone or scan it with the reader that they give you, Actually, let me show you one of those. Yeah, so this is the reader that they give you. Um, mine won't actually turn on because it's out of battery now. Um, and you just, so it's not batteries, you charge it and it comes with the cable, obviously. And you just like wave it over or you just use your iPhone 8 or above. When you apply it, because there is some trauma to the area of your body that you're applying, the glucose reading is inaccurate. So the device won't actually let it work for the first hour. But what I found personally is that actually it's not very accurate for the first eight to 12 hours sometimes. So my most important tip for this video is that I actually apply my sensor the night before the old one's gonna run out and then scan it in the morning. So this one, my old one, is gonna run out tomorrow morning at like sometime between seven and 8 a.m. And then I apply this one tonight and don't scan it, just leave it. And then, so in that way, you're like, the area is settling down and the lever is becoming more accurate without wasting any of the beginning time of the two weeks because as soon as you scan it you're on a countdown but if you don't scan it by the time you do scan it it will be completely accurate even and you still won't be able to use it for that first hour because there's no way to reset those settings and say that you have like has it on for longer but it's just one hour that you're just gonna have to finger prick for if you need to check your blood sugar during that time but yeah that is my main tip apply it the night before and then yeah when this one's done you just literally you just rip it off and scan the new one but yeah so let's get into application so you get this little box and then it comes with instructions but honestly you don't need them um and then it cut so the first thing you have to do is clean the site it comes with two alcohol swabs i don't really know why it comes with two because you only need one but i always <laughs> i just keep the extra one and then clean my phone with it little hack there um, especially like in coronavirus times, giving a little wipe over with your phone, great idea. Um, but yeah, and then, so you apply it to your arm is where they recommend the upper back of your arm. But I have seen people put it on the inside of their arm. I've seen people put it on their thigh as well. I haven't tried any of those sites myself yet, just because for me, it's comfortable on the back of my arm and I don't have any issues with it. So I don't see the need to mess with it. Just make sure you're rotating the sites so you're not putting it on the same place 
too often too soon together so I'm actually going to go to a whole different arm I'm just going to clean the whole site you don't have to clean your whole arm but so I'm also just looking in my screen so I can see what I'm doing um you don't have to clean your whole arm but I just just do while I decide where I'm going to do it and then just fan it to dry you need to make sure that the alcohol um like cleanser stuff is completely dry before you apply it because you it, it lose it's not as sticky if you don't wait so yeah wait for it to be completely dry and then it comes in these two separate parts and it's super simple to use so this part you just peel off the label and then this part you literally just twist one thing I do hate is that there's a lot of waste at the end of this so like you just you throw it all away like none of it's recyclable other than the box and stuff so then you're left with this part here and this part here you then put like put them together but you have to line up so if you can see this line on here and this line on here line them up and then put it on a flat surface but I'll just do it here and just push them together and this is and then you throw this bit away as well and this is the only bit that you need and then you just apply it so to decide where you want to put it I find if I put it on a more muscular part of my arm rather than a flubbier part it stays better because it's not moving as much whereas they're like where it's gonna jiggle it can fall off but if it's more like a solid part you're a bit better so I kind of tense my arm feel where I want to put it but then obviously make sure you're not putting it over the same bit all the time and I had it last time quite far forward so I'm going to put it towards the back um and then all you do is you put it over where you want I think I'm going to go here yeah put it over there I always get really nervous before I put it on not because it hurts because I'm like if I put it in the wrong place and it falls off then it's my fault but it doesn't actually hurt and it just takes my myself like I convince takes a while to convince myself that I am putting it in the right place and to be honest mine hasn't fallen off now for I don't know this year I don't think it's fallen off so we're doing well so yeah so you just put it over there and then relax your arm don't do it while your arm is tensed because that might hurt and you just literally now I'm considering is this too low down no this is good this is good um and then you literally just push it in make sure you do it fast and like otherwise it won't stick and it won't work at all it just won't go on so you have to literally just put it push it in fast it makes a horrible noise but it doesn't hurt so please do not worry about that just literally press it in I hold it there for like two seconds just I don't know feels like luck getting to stay on pull it off you throw this bit away so you literally throw away this and this and this it's a bit of a waste um and there you have your fresh new applied sensor one thing also i will say is don't put sleeves on for like 10 minutes because normally it's fine but occasionally it will bleed and occasionally it will wait it will like wait for a few minutes and then start to bleed which could be quite annoying because like yeah recently i put like a really nice top on and then it just bled through my top um so that was annoying i feel really stiff like i feel like i walk really carefully for the first like couple of minutes after i've applied it so i'm like don't knock it off but then the rest of the time i'm just like bullet in a china shop but yeah that is newly freshly applied sensor and then yeah just wait until your old one is over if you've done it overnight then wait till the morning and then yeah when you're ready to use it just scan it remember that you have to wait for an hour before it will work and then you literally just rip the old one off yeah that is it that is how you apply a freestyle libra sensor i hope this has been useful if you're just wondering like how it actually works if it hurts it actually doesn't hurt like at all it makes the world's worst sound it sounds like you're like shooting something but it, i literally did not even feel that sometimes i'm like oh it's in um so it doesn't hurt it's super easy super quick but yeah if you have any questions about the libra in general then please feel free to leave them in the comments below because yeah i will get back to you and answer them as soon as possible and yeah if this video was helpful for you please give it a little like because it really helps me to know what kind of videos you want to see and what videos are helpful but that is it for today's video i hope you guys all have a fantastic day and i will see you in the next one bye